Aloha, it's 365 Hawaii. With Eric and Julie Zemelis, and behind us is the Kona Airport. Our video today is, we have a lot of tips and tricks for getting around this, I'd say rather small airport, wouldn't you say that? Yeah. So yeah. we thought we'd share them with you so you guys can get through and make your lives a little bit easier. When you're traveling. So did you guys know, in the six years we've had this, tr this, tr this uh, channel, we've actually never given you guys an actual tour of the airport? <laughs> Well, that's so what today's all about. We decided to give you guys a little bit of history, maybe some cultural uh, significance, like the helmet behind us. And uh, also, like Eric said, we're going to make it so that you, when you're coming, is going to make your travel a little bit easier. Yeah, that's our goal. So let's go check it out. Okay. We're cutting into this video with some current news for you guys. Da da da. Da da da. So get this, you guys. The day after we filmed this video, uh, the Kona Air National Airport was actually shut down uh, because they said there were cracks in the runway. Yeah, and uh, luckily they've, they've just come back online, but at the same time, uh, it kind of makes this video almost a little relevant, more relevant, because uh, you have to have, uh, it has to work, you know what I mean? It's one of those things, if the if the runway goes down, the airport doesn't, a lot of things stop functioning, or people stop coming, Google start coming here, it, it, right. it's in fact, a big uh, deal. In fact, you guys, uh, we show you near the end of this thing where um, the Mokalili airline part is, um, also down there is the FedEx, the UPS, um, the USPS, these are all the and things. And you forgot Amazon too. Yeah, on top of that. Amazon ain't coming when the shit airport is <laughs> shut down. So um, I was writing on social media today how um, A, you take for granted things that you think show up for you every day, like the airport. Um, also that um, sometimes we don't give our county workers enough credit for being able to work all night long to fix the runway so that they could open it up at 6.30 this morning. And also the fact is that, you know what, this is a small island. When things don't fly in, we're like, all, oh, our comfortability factor just went down to zero. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so uh, this is part of living on an island. When things like this happen, all of a sudden you're cut off from things that uh, you expect to show up every day. Right. So now why don't we return you to our previously scheduled video. So as you guys can see, it's the Ellison Onizuka Kona International Airport. Who is Ellison Onizuka? He was a local boy done good. Ellison was a student at Konawina High School, local high school here in town. His parents actually uh, were in Halualoa, and uh, he had a love of space. And Ellison was the first Asian man ever to be in the space program at NASA. He graduated in 1978 in the NASA class, and then he went on to actually be on the Challenger, which sadly uh, blew up in 1986. And so um, to memorialize the work that he did, um, they named the airport after him, and uh, uh, my son actually went to Konawina and they have a huge mural of him on the high school uh, gymnasium. So uh, there you go. That's how this was named. Okay, one interesting thing here about uh, Kona is that on the majority we have no air conditioning. There's only one uh, boarding area that has air conditioning. Otherwise, it's all open spaces like this. And this goes along with, we also have no jet ramps either to come off the planes. You have ramps coming down and not those jetways that everybody else has. One good thing about our airport is the fact that we are on one long oval, but it's like one half of the oval. You can see the signs and they're well marked, so you can see exactly which airline you're either picking up from or dropping off to. So they get a thumbs up for that. Small airports. Okay, so we have a TSA in the background, and what makes our TSA a little bit different is number one, of course, again, it's an open concept, and uh, I will say, with the fans going, with all those people, sometimes it can be um, can be a little little hot in there. Um, and the other thing is, uh, most of the time we've been here, they do a pretty good job of getting the people through at a reasonable rate. We don't have that, you know, where you're waiting two hours and you're in a queue forever. Uh, it works pretty good. Uh, and what I'll say is also the TSA agents are all local and they, in general, tend to be really nice people. So if you come here and have Aloha, they will treat you back with Aloha. So that's one good thing about our TSA. Here we are in short-term parking. And interesting thing in Kona, we have no large parking garages. It's one big flat area. So the other thing, interesting thing about parking is two things are happening. One is that the fee for parking is about to go up here in short-term parking. The current uh, price is $15 a day and the new price is going to be $24 a day and that starts February 1st. So uh, get used to paying a lot more for parking around here. Uh, and the other thing that is kind of crucial with short-term parking is that everybody that has a rental car here uh, on Turo comes here and they puts it here uh, for people to pick up. Well, the airport is cranking down on that and I heard there is a ticket for doing that and they are actively enforcing that as well. So you probably don't want to do that anymore. Short-term parking always fills up here. It's kind of one of those, you're, you're lucky if you get a spot in this particular parking lot. Because 
remember, short-term parking and long-term parking are the same price. So everybody says, let's start with short-term. So we're gonna go show you long-term parking in a minute. But the tip for short-term parking is a lot of times they have their little sign that out that says full. But even if it says full, there still might be couple spaces at the very each end of it there if you're lucky kind of scout around and if not it, it's free for the first 15 minutes so you can get out and go to the other parking lot after that that's your little tip for the day okay here's your grumpy resident traveler person giving you guys some tips about the long-term parking lot behind me is that um we just have more visitors and more residents who are using the airport and we just are not keeping up with the demands for parking. So what you're gonna find here a lot is a full parking lot even on the long-term parking lot. So if you know any better, try not to actually park your car when you're leaving uh, Hawaii uh, for either inner island travel or for mainland travel. You know, get someone to drive you to the airport because trying to find a parking spot right when you have to go catch a plane and you have to drive around a lot, just know that this is happening right now. So put that into your plans. Have you ever wondered what this sculpture is here at the Kona Airport? Well, it is actually a uh, Hawaiian helmet, which is called a mahi ole, and it actually signifies, let me read this so I get this right, you guys. Uh, when, when worn with a long feathered cape, it offered physical and spiritual protection during battle and signified social and spiritual power during ceremonial rites. drag coming into the airport and uh, the tip for this place is that the speed limit is low it's 25 miles an hour and they have airport police and I have seen them giving tickets so you need to be careful about not speeding coming in and also the speed limit it's kind of like a like a, a oval inside the airport and that speed limit is 15 miles an hour and they are very firm about keeping people's speed down and they will yell at you they'll give you tickets they'll do all kinds of things so you better not speed around here I know it seems slow but it definitely keeps everybody safe there and that's what everybody's goal is to make sure that nobody gets run over by some speeding SUV tourist <laughs> okay Tourism as we know it actually started in Kailua Kona around 1965. And we had the old airport, which is closer to Kailua Kona. Then in 1970, the Kona International Airport was actually created. And the joke was the Air Traffic Control Center was created a year later. Hmm. That shows you how much traffic we had coming into Kailua Kona back then. But what people sometimes ask is, is the Kona Airport actually built on lava? Yes, it is. In fact, when you fly in, you will see that this airport is in the middle of a huge lava field that was actually created by Hawaii lava, uh, lava Flow back in like 1851. And so when I first moved here and I'm flying in and I'd never been to Kona, um, I was actually thinking somebody gave me the short end of the stick of coming to a tropical island because all you see is lava. And the green actually is only at the airport and those palm trees going out to the street. The only palm trees you're gonna see, if you go up the coast, it's had 30, about 35 minutes to get to the Kahala Resorts and that's where you're gonna see your next awesome palm tree, uh, palm tree and uh, lawn area. And then 20 minutes down into Kailua Kona town. So there's not a lot out here because we literally are on a huge lava field. But the cool thing about coming into uh, this uh, airport is everyone will tell you there is no gang planks. You park your, car, your, your, uh, your plane and you walk down the staircase. So as soon as you open the door of the plane, this of like warm, tropical, humid air, and sometimes it has the smell of plumeria. And all of a sudden you're just transported like, oh, I'm in Hawaii. And then you come down the gang plank and then you touch the tarmac. And some people feel like they felt like they're home. And that's kind of where the magic starts on your trip. So um, if you do feel called to Hawaii, we also help people learn how to move here by going to our 365 Hawaii Living channel. But um, also when you guys do come, uh, we're gonna put the Pono Pledge down here in the comments. Come with all the stuff that you're supposed to know. Um, come with your mineral sunscreen. Please don't wear chemical sunscreen on our reefs. Um, also come with your patience and your aloha. And you can learn more about ocean safety and all the things that help make your trip really, really good uh, by reading the Pono Pledge down in the comments. Hey, so for those of you who are watching this who actually knew what was behind me, the agricultural check-in station, it has actually been moved. It's been gone for actually six months. Uh, we just talked to a, uh, a TSA agent and actually they're checking the agricultural aspect in the back of the house. So that way they're still checking to make sure that you're not bringing in crazy fruits and everything else. You're not supposed to take off the island, but it's just not being done right here next to the uh, check-in area. And they did that to make the check-in a lot easier and smoother for the people who are coming through the airport. 
tips for the rental cars. Okay, here's one for you. As you are come off and waiting for your baggage in the baggage carousel, have the person who's gonna get the rental car jump on the rental car shuttle, which is just a short ways away in the airport here. Come down and start getting your rental car. And if you do it right, that person should have the rental car go back and pick everybody up with the luggage. And it makes it a lot easier than carrying all of your bags on the little trolley all the way out to you. How much do you hate getting lost on the way to the rental car experience before you have to go catch your flight? Doesn't that suck? Yes. All you have to do in the Kona airport is you drive down the road, you turn into the rental car area, you drop your car off, you hop on the shuttle, and it's like two seconds to the, the airport. It doesn't get easier than the Kona airport for dropping off your rental car and getting back to the airport to catch your flight in time. Okay, two more things about rental cars here. One is, as you can see, it's a long line of Jeeps. And the first question everybody asks is, do you need a Jeep in Kona? And the answer, there's only a couple places that you would could use a Jeep. So you don't always have to have a Jeep. It's not a necessity. It might be nice sometimes because the road, sometimes there's a couple beaches that are kind of half harsh to get to, but uh, it's not a mandatory thing. And the other thing I'm gonna tell you about uh, rental cars is that for a while there, we actually ran out of rental cars during uh, high seasons uh, in the summer and in, you know around Christmas time, and there was no rental cars available. But now they have got so many rental cars. This whole lot is filled with extra rental cars. So there's no problem with having enough cars for everybody. Okay, so uh, one thing that you guys should be aware of here is that uh, our airport is old and unlike places in the mainland, we are slow to fix things and we're slow to update things. So uh, the joke is, is that this is, uh, this is the Hawaiian uh, baggage carousel. And every single time I've been to this airport, this baggage carousel clogs up and stops every single time. It's kind of an example of, of what it is. But they do get the luggage off eventually. It just takes two or three times with some guy going up to the top and jiggling their luggage around. But again, remember, have a little bit of understanding and patience because we're not like it is in a lot of those big cities. One of the things that everybody seems to have in their airports is a cell phone parking lot area so that you can at least park and just wait while you're waiting for somebody's uh, delayed flight to come in. So this is the cell phone parking lot. And what they have done recently, however, is that if you are actually waiting for somebody to come in, they want you to park along that fence line. Because what's happened here is that we don't really have enough parking for everyone so that they decide to make the other part of the parking lot for the employees of the airline. So that way we could actually have our TSA people be able to get to work during the day. Um, but they will, actually fine you if you're here for more than an hour and do not leave your car here um, that's another way to get uh, a fine so um, used for what it's normally used for and that's to wait for people who are coming in stay in your car Hey, so if you do decide to use Lyft or Uber, there is a ride share right behind me in the island. And it's actually right smack in the middle of all the islands. It's three in, three back right behind me. And it's right next to actually um, Hawaiian. So uh, that's where you're gonna meet your um, um, Uber and Lyft dudes. Uh, if you're flying inter-island and primarily you're going to Maui or Oahu, you can fly Mokalili. And Mokalili is sort of outside in that, we were talking about that general uh, area. And it's way at the end of the road here. Uh, but the beauty is you don't have to go through two t uh, TSA if you go through Mokalele. Uh And they're right here and they also have Paradise helicopters and a few other things out here. And side note, uh, FedEx is also out here as well. So. Have you guys ever noticed when you run out of an airplane, everybody runs for the bathroom and then it's congested and clogged? Get this, this is your little tip for you. Get out of the loading area and come outside and this is outside the baggage area and use the bathroom out here because there's not that many people who are going to be using these bathrooms. There's also a way that you can get your little snackies right here at a vending machine. But tip, tip, tip. When you come into Kona, you are probably wearing inappropriate clothing. You're probably wearing your jeans and all that kind of stuff. Pack before you go in your carry-on to put shorts and things like that. So you can use this bathroom and change your clothes. So when you get out, it's 88 degrees and you know 80% humidity. You're ready to go and you're not sweating. You know, the older I get, when I go traveling, you find things that actually you totally miss when you're younger. Well, one of these things is the fact that if you are handicapped or you're older or whatever, or you have too much bags and it's too heavy, it's nice to be able to pull right up and be able to get that. So right behind Eric, he can show you. This is the handicap loading zone here. So you could actually get out of your car if you're handicapped or old like us, and then you come around here and then boom, you've got your luggage rack. So you can actually take these through TSA. So this is really, again, a nice proximity to be able to help you make your way through the airport. One of 
our things of uh, small town going back to that idea is that uh, we do roll up the sidewalks around nine o'clock around here. And that's included as the airport too. Yeah. So if you guys, sometimes it happens, and especially I've using lately, that um, your flight might get in late, like after 11. Um, we were just passing the rental car experiences and a lot of those rental cars stop renting cars after 10.30. Yeah, it makes it a little more challenging. I, right. I, I, you know, so just be aware of that. And the other thing is uh, Uber also is is tricky around here. I get, uh, I get, it's hard to find, uh, and there are not a lot of people to do it, and it's a long way out from town from, from being an Uber. Right. If you need to take an Uber up to the Kahala Coast, too, don't forget, it's a 40-minute hike up there. It's going to be very expensive for you to do that. Yeah. But um, also, a lot of, obviously, other ports around the country have airport hotels. We do not have an airport hotel. <laughs> it's an, it, I've heard in the works it might be happening, I don't know, in the next 10 years. Yeah. But you you are uh, 25 minutes from a hotel this way and you're 35, 40 minutes from that way. So um, when your flight is delayed and you get here late at night, um, there is a taxi stand at the very far north of the airport that you can catch a taxi. Most likely it's gonna be better than trying to get an Uber or a Lyft. Um, also just know that um, it happens and that, you know, just be prepared because we just have this roll of their sidewalk at nine o'clock experience. So I have something that's not quite at nine o'clock at night, but what I'll, the other thing that's interesting about this airport is the fact that there's only so many gates. And sometimes we have more planes than we have gates and mm. they have to get the plane out to get the plane in. And so at that point, you end up sitting at the end of the runway. They have an end of the runway parking for plane. And it's really funny. I've spent at least three or four hours. One time I spent an hour and a half just sitting out there at the end of the runway I have with too. the little air conditioner running. So you're nice and cool at least, but it's a- uh, <laughs> But you're anxious to get out and start yeah, your like, Hawaii vacation. Yeah, you're like, come on, I a plane I gotta sit an hour and a half on the on the tarmac before I get in but that's a, another little tip it doesn't yeah. happen all the time it's primarily yeah. when it's busy yeah wait, though I've also been to a variety of airports around the country where there's constant airport construction that ain't happening here yeah, <laughs> yeah. so uh, basically we want to make sure that you guys uh, kind of are prepared for your trip to Hawaii and uh, we are offering this to you guys and we sponsor this channel ourselves yep uh, because we are realtors with real broker and we want to help make your experience awesome so if you're thinking we also have another another channel it's called 365 real estate minute and it's all dedicated to uh, real estate right so if you want to learn about uh, statistics and trends and how to's and moving guides and all that stuff go check that out and you can also join what we have is our Ohana where we take new residents in um, who want to get involved with the community and do some volunteer work to make the island a better place to live right and that's 365 Hawaii living. Right. So, so with that, that we're going to we say, say aloha. aloha.